Everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Customer approved all repairs on this 2014 Dodge Ram or a Ram 1500 with the Hemi V8. So, parts that I got: timing cover seal and this timing kit by Melling Engine Parts from Rock Auto. So it has the updated metal-backed timing chain guide, obviously the timing chain itself, and a new tensioner. So place your bets now. What are we going to find behind this timing cover? It's going to be a snap guide, broken tensioner, I mean that slop, you know, how far is that timing chain going to be advanced? We'll find out shortly. I started the teardown. We got the cooling fan out of the way, the radiator fan, the shroud, the belt, and you have to use a a puller kit, so I got this from Advance Auto. It's uh, pretty versatile, but this rod that goes into your crankshaft <clears throat> is too short. So I had to improvise with a couple adapters back there. And anyways, it's it's coming out, but you can see this bolt, the forcing screw is very short, so you have to basically put more and more spacers back there than pull the whole thing off. So let's get that off. Okay, so we're ready to remove this timing cover and it says it is not necessary to remove the water pump for timing cover removal. So it tells you, you remove the orange bolts and this whole assembly timing cover plus water pump comes off. However, I did loosen up the water pump and, you know, it's a huge thing just to let all the remaining coolant drain out here so we can catch it in the pan instead of having it end up in the crankcase with our brand new you know oil you don't want coolant in your oil so that's done so I'm going to tighten up the, the non orange bolts so that the water pump stays on the timing cover and then we're going to remove all the orange bolts there are 12 of them get this cover off okay so all the necessary bolts are removed there's also five down that attach the oil pan to the bottom of the cover. Those are removed. Let's uh, get a pry bar and try to gently pry on this cover, see what happens. Listen. Oh, there's one more right here. There's more coolant coming out. That's unavoidable. I'm let that drain down a little bit. Okay. So here's our prize. Do we see anything broken? Absolutely, this timing chain is the guide is completely gone. The tensioner is still there, it's overextended. So is that why our camshaft is over advanced? Because of this guide right here. And look, it wasn't making any sounds. That absolutely makes sense. So equivalent of one tooth, basically this chain is shorter now, so the timing, you know, the cam is advanced. Bingo. That's all we needed to see. So now, to get to this timing guide, we gotta remove this oil pump. That's a bummer. 
I was hoping that it was just a tensioner and that is easy just two bolts pop it in get it out no problem but this guide you gotta remove the oil pump unfortunately and you can see the oil pickup tube this bolt right down here it comes in from the bottom so I can undo these bolts and see if the oil pump will slide out enough to get to that bolt but otherwise I really don't want to take off this oil pan so now probably the trickiest part of this procedure is getting out this bolt that holds the pickup tube to the oil pump it's one bolt it's 13 millimeters I loosened it up but as you can see there is basically no room you can kinda spin it with your finger gently and it's upside down and we don't want it to drop into the oil pan so I'm gonna probably put a magnet there to just to catch it it's a pretty long bolt uh, so I'm gonna have to get that off you know off camera and then the oil pump just slides right off so this is poor design in terms of serviceability they want you to drop the entire oil pan which is ridiculous you could have made the oil pan just you know give you a little more finger room that would be really nice Chrysler but no you have to be a uh, skinny fingered reach around move get this bolt out so once you get it out we'll take off the oil pump and see what the carnage is behind that alright this oil pump is a little bit of a struggle just because of that pickup tube even though the bolt is out the pickup tube and the lip you see the o-ring right there is still holding the pump you know from the bottom so basically just pry that down pivot the oil pump this way and now it should wiggle off There is our prize. Nice. Oh. So I put the tensioner back on. This is the way the chain was, you know, as is, as the truck is. Timing guide is obviously chewed up, but that does not explain how this chain, how this camshaft is advanced. We saw on the scope that it was advanced about 15 crank degrees so what I want to do is rotate the engine and line up the timing marks so on the cam we're gonna be a little mark should be you know at at the very top and on the crank there should be a little dot kind of almost at the at the bottom so right now I don't know if you'll be able to see this, see this on the camera, but the mark on the camshaft is right there, and the mark on the crank, it's really hard to see. There's a little dot kind of right where that two, you know link is. So we need to spin this engine over 360 degrees so the cam rotates 180 and that mark is up here so I'm going to do that just reinstall the crank pulley bolt so let me do that and then we'll see if this if the camshaft is advanced then this mark will be right up here but the crank will not be all the way you know down that dot and then we can count the actual links on this chain and compare it to you know the new chain as it comes with assembly marks so basically there's one mark right there there's a mark right there yeah, that's the double mark for the cam. 
those two links are marked and then this one is for the crank so we can count exactly how many how many uh, links are supposed to be between the two dots and see if this thing really did advance itself all right let's inspect so here is the cam um, sprocket mark you can see it's right there so I marked the two links that are surrounding it and then the little dot Oh, it's very hard to show. Okay, so the dot on the crank pulley is right there, and then I marked. See, there's the dot. Then I marked the um, this link with a marker right here. Not this one, the one before it. Now let's count how many links it takes to get from the dot to the camp. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and then we have the mark. So eighteen full links. Let's count that on the new chain. Okay, so I took a couple pictures with my phone for reference. So this one is of the cam and that mark is in between two links so that's exactly what the new chain you know, I drew that spot right there that's the mark and now next picture is the crank you can see that dot right there is in between two links and we have exactly 18 links between the two marks. So let's count 18 links. So let's start with this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So right now, as the truck sits, this dot is right here. It's supposed to be one tooth over right there. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that the cam, you know, if the crank, so it's supposed to be right here, right? If everything is to spec. So imagine the whole chain advanced one tooth on the crank. Now this part is actually shorter. We're supposed to have 18 and a half teeth between the two marks. We only have 18. So the scope was not lying. We are advanced. How? I, I usually camshafts retard. You know, if it, if the chain is loose, the crank is pulling on the cam, and the cam will usually retard. Sometimes the forces on the cam, you know, it does go back and forth because the valve springs or the uh, lifters or something are pushing on it. So, for example, if this thing broke and the crank stopped and the cam was like, pop, <laughs> advanced one tooth, that's exactly what happened. So, very, very neat. Uh, one thing we can do is actually measure the degrees, like how many teeth are on the crank sprocket. Uh, divide that by 360, or divide 360 by the number of teeth, and see, you know, let's say the cam advanced one tooth, okay, but the guide is super worn. So that would actually relax that chain and shift it back to home base. So it might not be exactly one tooth advanced, but it's still advanced. I like it. So let's put on some new components chain, obviously the guide, the tensioner, put this thing back together. Uh, we'll have to do a cam crank relearn and take a known good scope capture. Okay, so now that we have our positions lined up, let's go ahead and retract this tensioner again. So pretty easy, just uh, use a little household clamp. 
and then put that grenade pin through the hole. Perfect. Obviously, we're going to take off our busted. <laughs> yeah, that sucker was uh, definitely, definitely getting a little thin right there. Pretty crazy. Now, the question is, can I get this chain off without removing the cam phaser? Maybe, maybe not. So the cam gear comes off and it is keyed. And now, yes, you can definitely remove the chain without removing the phaser. That's, that's pretty awesome. So there's that. Let's pop the new one in. And then we'll have to make sure that the marks obviously align. We'll have to put in the new guide and then probably turn the crank a little forward since it, right now it's, um, it's one tooth off. By the way, just for reference, I laid the old and the new chain side by side and they are Identical in length. I don't see any chain stretch on the old chain at all. So, yeah, this was not due to chain stretch. All right, here comes the new chain. Slip it over that. Make sure our mark lines up right there. Here's our crank sprocket. Now, basically want to slip it on to the sprocket itself. And then align it with the dot and put this guide here. Basically make sure everything is perfect. By the way, here's a side-to-side -side comparison of the old and the new guides. That is pretty insane. That was getting so thin. I guess it could have snapped off at some point and caused even more destruction. So, like I said, the customer was driving around like this for about a year. Yeah, check engine. All right, here's the new guide. You see how much slop there is right there? So you have to move the crankshaft forward. I made sure the dot is aligned with the chain. Let me just double check. All right, so I'm using a zip tie to keep the chain in place with the marks aligned so it doesn't jump anywhere while we install the water pump and the tensioner. We gotta get this bolt out. And I don't want to, you know, disturb anything here. So let's use, I actually just got this in the mail. Save them brushless compact half inch impact gun. Brushless motor, they just sent me one. I'm like, if I like it, 
I'll feature in a video. So this is the first time it's actually being used. <laughs> Let's see. Interesting. Ah, so there's even a stop break feature. You see it goes in little pulses. Let's see here. No stop break. So it has a low and a high mode, I think. Off the re read the instructions. Okay, so if you're going forward, you can select low or high speed. That's high speed. That's low speed. And if you're going in reverse, that's a pretty neat feature. I've never seen that in any other tool before. So we'll keep using this guy and see how it lasts in a shop environment. All right, so here's the oil pump. Let's get these out of the way. And you can see it's splined. And the splines have to line up with the grooves on the crank pulley, obviously. So, I mean, it's just a matter of getting it right in its happy spot. So this is gonna might take a little bit of effort because the pickup tube wants to come up. The oil pump. What if we just put it on here first and come press it down? And I'm gonna do this off camera because it's a pain in the butt. Okay, so I slid the oil pump on. Just as long as you align the grooves, it goes on pretty easy. But now the pickup tube is not inside the oil pump, so we have to rotate it and hopefully <laughs> oh, this is so much fun. So I'm going to gently hold pickup tube to the side and then hopefully it'll align itself with the oil pump. I guess that's pretty good. Yep, that's where it wants to be. So now we have to put that silly bolt in and then align everything. Put these bolts in. And put the tensioner on. So, oil pump is installed, torqued down. The, um, Pickup tube is also torqued down. Pull the grenade pin. That's how far the tension is supposed to extend. And should be in good shape. Just gotta put the timing cover back on. Fill this thing up with coolant. And take it for a rip. Alright, back to the ram. I got all the timing cover bolts torqued down. Now the tricky part is installing this harmonic balancer you need a special puller which that kit you know the bolts not long enough to reach the threads because they're way in the, the crankshaft so how do you improvise well the the bolt is actually starting to thread in but you don't want to use the bolt to just pull in the harmonic balancer because it's only hanging on by a few threads and if you give it too many beans you're in big trouble so basically what I'm doing is just lightly tightening the bolt 
And then using a ball joint cup and that plate that fits around the big washer to just tap the harmonic balancer a little at a time and then tighten the bolt. And hopefully this will go all the way in and uh, we'll be in good shape. some taps you can see the bolt is now loose tighten it up a little more and just keep doing that procedure until the harmonic balancer is seated all the way in you can't swing the hammer too much because uh, the condenser is right here so it is, it is definitely migrating in. So I'm just gonna keep doing that until it's all the way in. We're gonna to torque it down to 127 foot pounds. So now that we're, you know, have like that much more to go, the bolt has enough threads on there so we can, now we can use it to pull it the rest of the way. So on this, save them um, half inch impact gun. Cool thing is, we can go to low mode and this will not over torque anything. Almost all the way there, a couple more millimeters. So when we finish that up, we'll torque it. Hopefully this thing runs.